you can now drive your Mogurt from your data source. When I built templates for teams and leagues, I've set them up differently depending on whether we were optimizing for internal editability or volume rendering. Now with the updates in Templator 3.5, we can set them up the exact same way. Dynamic Essential Properties, a new feature in Templator 3.5, bridges the gap between Templator's data-driven automation and the world of Mogurt files. This functionality allows users to control essential properties directly from your data sources. Today, I'm gonna to walk you through two ways to set up your Google Sheet so that you can use your data to update your Mogurt without any manual updates. And the difference here is going to be how you have your Mogurt set up. So stay tuned to see what those differences are. If you're interested in getting up and running with Templator, there's a 95% off coupon code for Templator Rig in the description below. You can also follow my Data Clay playlist that has a host of other tutorials that will get you up and running as well. If you're liking this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now let's dive in and find out what the magic of Templator 3.5 can do for your efficiency and workflow. So here we are in our project. We already have our essential graphics panel populated and I'm gonna get to formatting and adding different uh, groups later on and, and how that impacts what you need to do in the Google Sheet. But for now, I'm starting with everything, what I'm calling flat, just everything is just in the central graphics panel. And we have our comp here. And if I play this back, we have our asset that we're gonna edit through the central graphics panel. So everything is tied in here. And if I were to go in and change, Some of the assets you can see that everything is updating as we'd expect so in order to get templator to work with your central graphics panel think of it as working on the layer above so all this is in here for this comp so i'm gonna start by taking my comp here my nfl draft comp and dropping it into a new comp and we're gonna call this one NFL draft dash rate. Okay, so now that we have our new comp here, if I twirl this open, we're going to see the essential properties here, and we should see everything laid out the exact same as it was laid out for this NFL draft comp with all the assets in the essential graphics panel. So everything looks identical here. So we can go ahead and on this layer with the essential properties here, we can go up to Effect, Data Clay, Templator Settings. So we're applying the settings on the pre-comped layer. So now that we have this Templator Settings on this layer, we need to decide what we're going to call the layer here. And if I pull up my sheet, I called it NFL Draft with no space. So let me update here. So you have source name and you have layer name. So I'm gonna hit enter here and make sure that this is NFL draft. So this part right here needs to match my layer name. So it goes layer name of the asset that's within the, the pre-comp that contains the essential properties of our essential graphics. Layer name followed by an at sign. And this is the part, this is the part that's going to, going to look different if you're used to using Templator. So to use the essential graphics panel, we need the layer name, at sign, and then within your brackets, you need to call out the name of the essential property that you would like to update in this column. So if I twirl down my essential properties, you have all of the names here. So I need to make sure that I am using the name listed here, just like a layer name when we, when we were using Templator, uh, directly tied to uh, the layer text fields. So make sure this is all labeled and exact, capitalization and all, within each one of these assets. And as you can see, I did adjust a couple of these. So city name and nickname are both all caps. And I did that so that I can just show you that we need to follow everything capitalization wise make sure that everything is exact so that it will update. 
So you can see I have my city name with the space in between, all caps, and nickname, all caps. And everything else is capital case. So everything is mimicked from this area into my spreadsheet column headers. All right, so let's go down to images here because I have, again, a couple different types of images here. We have JPEG, PSD, and PNG, all accepted within Templator and usable here within my project and something I can update here. So this is going to look exactly like you're used to seeing with Templator. I don't have an at sign or my brackets around my images because I put my effect control, the templator settings directly on the image. So player image one, player cutout one, and team logo all have the templator setting effect applied to each one of these so that I can use this footage area up here. I have my file path to where all of these live within my templator footage folder on my F drive. So as long as all of these images live in this folder, I can use this footage uh, path link here to help me update and change these out within templator. So again, player image one is player image one here. Just make sure that your column headers are identical to your layer name. So if you need to go in and change one or the other, make sure you do that. The way I usually do this is just by going in here, hitting enter, copying what I put in, and then pasting it into my spreadsheet. That way I know there's, if, if I accidentally spell something wrong, get a fat finger or something like that, I don't have to worry about doing that if I copy and paste. So do that for each one of these, and then make sure your footage just has this path here laid out. So this should be very familiar. So I'm kind of skimming over this, but I want you to, to note that it doesn't look like this at with the brackets. And that's why I wanted to cover it. it looks exactly like you're used to seeing with templators. So let's cover the colors here. So this is going to also look a little bit different. I do have the, the hashtag in front of the hexadecimal number. And typically when I've done this within templator, I just have the six digit hex code. And then I put an expression within After Effects to convert that number to the RGB hex code within After Effects so that it pulls the color correctly. And here, we're gonna be able to just include the hashtag here with the hex decimal number that will automatically update our colors here. And I use hexadecimal all the time. You can use arrays if you would like. So once we get into that, I'll change one of them so you can see how to use an array. But I am updating these colors here, again, following the, the column header the same, the, the layer name, at sign, in brackets with my color. So I have primary color, secondary color, accent color. All right, so all those are within the brackets. And then I can put my hex code below. All right, so let's go ahead and rig this up so i have my you click on your google sheet and within here i have formatting and flat so i do have two different sheets here at the bottom of my sheet because i'm going to show you the different formatting here in a minute because if i put all these assets into different groups within the essential graphics panel the layout within the Google Sheet, the column headers need to needs to change just slightly to reflect that so that it all works properly. So stick around if you're gonna be using different groupings within your central graphics panel. So here we go. So I have my NFL mock draft. I'm gonna select flat, link worksheet, and there it appears. You can see flat, draft mock, the player 3.5. All right, so you can also see here that everything updated to be all white. These are, the, these are the push and pull within the essential graphics panel. And they went all white because I'm now connected to a Google Sheet. And you can see my images here are still gray. And that's okay because I am using, I'm changing the images directly through Templator using the Templator settings with the column headers 
working directly in each one of these comps. So I'm not expecting that to update within the Essential Graphics panel here. Great. So let me go to an area where we have the most data here. And let's go ahead and hit the preview first here. And I have two. So uh, this is going to be my row two. And it goes to 10. I just have a couple rows here. So when I hit preview first, it's not going to change because Will Anderson is the player. If I go next, going to update our colors updated, all of our data updated, our image updated. And if I scroll through here, okay, Seattle Seahawks with their with the Seahawks logo behind there. His name updated there with the colors. We have our image in the background. We have the the name updated in the background, team name, and we have the team logo here. So everything appears to be working. So let's say we wanted to use that array for the color. Since he's in Ohio State, I'm going to change the white to red because that's an easy easy hex number that I know will work in an array. So let's add our open bracket here and we're going to type 255 because it's RGB, so we want all red and let's say 2525 when I hit enter. Okay, nothing changes, but that's because we got to reload here. So I'm just going to hit my reload and anything that was white turns red. So that works. So that is how you use an array here within the color column. If you would like to use an array, again, I typically use hex code. So I'm just gonna do that, put it back to white, and there you go. So lastly, I wanna show you what happens if we have all of these assets within a grouped setting here within the Essential Graphics panel. When you start to get so many different assets, I tend to lay these out in a way that's easy to open and close as a, as a user here. So this is how I would typically lay things out. I have my images down here. I have all my text that I want to update and change. And I want to, I have my colors up here they're going to update and change. Now, again, these colors are not represented in this comp because this is all tied to the Google Sheet because these are all white. So if I were to try and keep this the same here and go back to our Anderson asset, oh, well, what happened? It defaulted back to what where we started, right, with Bijan Robinson 1-7 running back Texas. Well, that's not what we wanted. Well, that's because the formatting here changed, and we need to write our column headers in a slightly different way in order for it to read through this formatting. So let me pull up my Google Sheet here, and I'm gonna go to my formatting tab so you can see the difference here. So within this flat one, we just had our layer name for the pre-comp, the at sign, and then in brackets, we had our Essential Properties layer name. So when I go to the formatting one, you can see this looks slightly different. And the difference here is only that I added the group with a greater than sign before the layer name. So if you do grouping, which if you have a ton of layers, keeps things organized. If you do this, just make sure that you change your column headers to reflect that. So you can say you can see that this says NFL draft. So we still have this is all consistent. Everything ahead of the at sign is consistent. Our layer for the pre-comp, the at sign, and then we need to add our grouping. So our grouping here is text. And within the text, it's player first name. So player first name falls within text. So we just need to call out, look at the essential properties within this layer. 
and look under text because I also have this here. You can see under text and then the layer. So I've updated all of these. All have the same layout here. Colors, greater than sign, secondary color. And again, the images are pulling from what is typical of Templator. They all have their own Templator settings applied to their direct image. And I am calling these out based on their layer level and not through the Essential Graphics panel. So that's why these have different column headers. So now what I need to do is go up here, change my sheet to, to formatting. So now this should be calling out the formatting. I haven't changed my footage because that's all in the same exact spot. And when I initiate this, we should see, I'm going to go to three here, actually. We should see, because we're already on Will Anderson here, we should see everything change color-wise with Seattle's color. So I'm actually going to change this to three just so that I can hit the, or so I can preview the first job here in this column. There we go. So it works. And if I change this to two and I do that, then we'll see it switch to Will Anderson and everything is working as we'd expect. So that's the benefit of using the Essential Graphics panel. And that's how you lay out your column headers to apply everything within the Essential Graphics panel to be able to update and change everything within the Essential Graphics panel through a Google Sheet so that you can keep on moving and work collaboratively with teams maybe outside of their someone who can use, use After Effects. So I hope that was helpful and look forward to seeing what you do with it.